how did Rhaenyra Targaryen go from the spunky little girl we met in episode 1 to a woman willing to go to war against her former best friend? Though House of the Dragon follows several members of the extended Targaryen family, the show's main protagonist is Rhaenyra, the first woman to be named heir to the Iron Throne. Daemon was not made to wear the crown, but I believe that you were. And though she claims to be interested in upending Westeros' political systems, the first season of House of the Dragon traces Rhaenyra's path from an idealistic young woman to a canny operator, willing to undermine her principles in order to establish and retain her power. Here's our take on how Rhaenyra became the very thing she hated most. I'm Queen Rhaenyra now. It's made clear from the beginning that Rhaenyra doesn't really want power in the same way that everyone else in King's Landing does. What Rhaenyra wants most is to be left alone. <laughs> But thanks to her royal fate, she's placed in a highly visible position of authority, one that comes with big demands and responsibilities. Despite this, at every turn, she tries her hardest to be free and live according to her own desires, ignoring what she is quote-unquote supposed to do because of who her father is. Enjoyed that, did you? Who <laughs> knows what our next taste freedom? And though Rhaenyra has a few opportunities to pretend to be someone else, especially when she visits the underbelly of King's Landing with Daemon, she ultimately has to return to being Rhaenyra Targaryen with everything that name entails. Without the opportunity to live the life she wants, she instead becomes focused on the power she will gain once Viserys dies. Because if she can't be truly free, then she wants to fundamentally remake the government of Westeros in her image, a different kind of freedom she can settle for. When I'm queen, I will create a new order. In particular, young Rhaenyra wants to both live in and create a Westeros that is kinder to women. She spends much of her adolescence resisting her father Viserys' demand that she marry and begin having children. After all, her own mother died in childbirth in a particularly gruesome fashion that we got to see in the first episode. It's no wonder that Rhaenyra, above all, wants to avoid having children. Rhaenyra also pursues her own sexual agency with Sir Criston, deciding to live for what she wants. This is what makes Rhaenyra's character so appealing. We love a rebel, and she staunchly opposes the archaic traditions of Westeros' ruling class. I do not wish to get married. Even I do not exist above tradition and duty, Rhaenyra! This is all in sharp contrast to Alicent, who accepts those traditions and duties throughout her life without pushback. When her father suggests that she ingratiate herself with the king, she does it. She marries the much older Viserys without complaint, and though she doesn't enjoy having his children, she still makes an effort to embody the role of queen. A true queen counts the cost to her people. The tension between Rhaenyra's birthright and her own desires find their fullest expression in her relationship with her father. Even though Viserys named her heir, she lives with the knowledge that he would have preferred a son, and in fact hastened her mother's death in the pursuit of a male heir. He didn't choose me, he spurned Daemon. And the whispers throughout Westeros doubting Viserys' decision definitely don't help. Want to know even more about Rhaenyra? Head to Audible to listen to the thrilling history of the Targaryens, Fire and Blood by George R.R. R. Martin, which served as the inspiration for House of the Dragon. Audible can help you get lost in fantasy worlds like Westeros or discover new ways to laugh, be inspired, or be entertained. New members can try it free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash the take or text the take to 500, 500 Audible is the home for storytelling, with an incredible selection of audiobooks spanning across every genre, from bestsellers and new releases to mysteries, thrillers, and celebrity memoirs. Whatever you're into, you can find it on Audible. If you can't get enough of the fantasy and family politics of House of the Dragon, check out some of the other amazing series available on Audible, like Of Blood and Bone by John Gwynn, or A Chorus of Dragons by Jen Lyons. And Audible isn't only audiobooks. Members get full access to a growing selection of Audible originals and podcasts, too, which gives you a chance to discover new favorites and new formats, like the exclusive Words Plus Music series. You can download or stream 
included titles as much as you want. Plus, as an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. So what are you waiting for? Let Audible, the home of storytelling, help you discover new ways to laugh, be inspired, or be entertained. New members can try it free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash the take or text the take to 500-500. That's audible.com slash the take or text the take to 500-500 to try Audible free for 30 days. Audible.com slash the take. As House of the Dragon jumps forward in time, we start to see a more adult Rhaenyra making a series of choices that would have horrified her younger self. For most of her childhood, Rhaenyra steadfastly opposes all of her father's attempts to arrange a wedding for her, but then she actively rejects a possible opportunity to actually gain the freedom she claims to want. After she sleeps with Sir Criston, he offers to marry her and run away to Essos where they could be anonymous and free of their duties. If there were another path, one that led to freedom. Would you tread it? Rhaenyra turns him down, because ultimately she needs the comforts and privileges that her position provides to her. I may chafe at my duties, but do you think I would choose infamy in exchange for a bushel of oranges or a ship to a shy? Instead, Rhaenyra tries to convince Sir Criston to continue to break his oath of chastity as her secret lover, an arrangement that would work well for her while forcing him to live in shame. Rhaenyra's once rebellious attitude starts to be portrayed as an inherent selfishness. She wants all the benefits of her role without the less glamorous responsibilities, to the point where when she does eventually get married, she and her husband Lenor agree to have an open marriage, something she knows could ultimately create a crisis for their family and complicate their bloodline. And when it becomes politically expedient years later, Rhaenyra unflinchingly arranges marriages for her own children in order to strengthen her alliance with Rhaenys and House Velaryon. I'll make you an offer. Back Luke's claim and let us betroth Lena's children to mine. And even later, when Rhaenyra does choose her own spouse, it's ultimately for political reasons. Rather than spurring progress and bringing modernity to the system like she once swore she would, she ends up relying on ancient Targaryen traditions when she marries Daemon as a way of benefiting her own position. <laughs> Of course, the biggest betrayal of Rhaenyra's younger self is the fact that she had children at all. Though she feared and hated the idea of childbirth, she eventually goes out of her way to have a child with Daemon, again as a way of strengthening her own hold on power. And while she originally wanted to find her own path in life and sought total freedom, some of Rhaenyra's biggest setbacks come because of her concern for her sons, especially after Lucerys wounds Aemon's eye. While Rhaenyra tries to maintain a tentative peace with Alicent, she decides to fully commit to war only after her son Lucerys is killed. Her conflict may have initially been defined by her own agenda, but she slowly become defined by motherhood. My father looked after me and helped to prepare me for my duties. Your mother will do the same for you. So what causes Rhaenyra's change, and is she really betraying her own ideals? Consider the changes in her friendship, rivalry, and eventual outright hostility with Alicent. At first, Alicent is actually the kinder and more empathetic of the two girls. It will take time. It did when I lost my own mother. Rhaenyra, on the other hand, claims to want to live outside of the royal family, but still shows some early signs of enjoying her power over others. Her heart broken for those. Your Grace. Should I say to stop? From the beginning. But Alison's kindness eventually becomes muddied with ulterior motives, especially in her relationship with Viserys. This is a very kind gesture, Alison. Despite being blindsided, Rhaenyra tacitly agrees to Alicent and Viserys' marriage as a way of avoiding another potentially more dangerous choice, and their union fundamentally changes the nature of their friendship. Alicent is now the queen and legally Rhaenyra's stepmother, meaning that she's in a position of power above Rhaenyra, at least while Viserys is still alive. Rhaenyra loses her best friend and closest confidant at a pivotal time in her life. Alicent may have gained a husband and a queenship, but she also lost a friendship. I find I have few friends, baby. What anyone sees when they look at me now is the queen. The young women drift apart, the trajectories of their lives permanently altered, and as Alicent gives Viserys children, more importantly a son, Rhaenyra's former best friend becomes the mother of the very thing that could threaten her claim to the throne. 
The contrast deepens in their respective relationships with their fathers. Other than her marriage, Viserys has been pretty hands-off with Rhaenyra. She already has power and simply wants her father to respect and admire her the way he would have seen a firstborn son. I want him to see me as more than this little girl. Whereas since childhood, Alicent has been used by her father for his own political gain. Both Rhaenyra and Alicent eventually come to see tradition and hierarchy as a weapon, albeit from fundamentally different perspectives. Where Rhaenyra struggles against the traditions that would bind her to the subservient role of women in Westerosi society, Alicent begrudgingly accepts them and then uses them to her advantage. She learned from her father that she must work to advance her position and to cloak her ambitions under the guise of duty. We play an ugly game. And now, for the first time, I see that you have the determination to win it. As time passes, Alicent's resentment and jealousy of Rhaenyra grows, both because of the way Rhaenyra does as she pleases, and because Alicent isn't afforded that same freedom. What have I done? But what was expected of me? Forever upholding the kingdom, the family, the law. Rhaenyra and Alicent's hostilities come to a head in the wake of their son's fight, which both leaves Aemon without an eye and threatens to bring Rhaenyra's indiscretions out into the open. By now, Alicent has become used to power and demands a literal eye for an eye. On the other hand, Rhaenyra is able to contain herself. Rhaenyra is the only one who's demonstrated restraint and rely on the privileges that she previously scorned. The line of succession is the most important thing, and shields both her and her children from her own infidelity. My sons are in line to inherit the Iron Throne, Your Grace. This is the highest of treasons. Both Rhaenyra and Alicent have suffered as a result of this system they may not like, but were ultimately born into, forced to play the game put in front of them as the Targaryen Empire begins to crumble and both of them end up investing their hopes and dreams into their children being the ones to continue that system, rather than breaking it. On one hand, Rhaenyra gives in to many of the worst and most damning instincts of the Targaryen family and of Westeros' political system. But on the other hand, her thirst for power makes sense. The only way for her to have the freedom she craves is to actually be the person who holds all the power. So, in many ways, she's still the confident, often defiant girl we saw in episode one. As rebellious as Rhaenyra is, or was, she didn't want it to come to war. When dragons flew to war, everything burned. I do not wish to rule over a kingdom of ash and bone. But soon realizes that it must. With the show teeing up a bloody second season, we'll see just how far Rhaenyra will go to claim what's rightfully hers. I thought I wanted it. But the burden is a heavy one.